What's up everybody? Welcome back. As always, this is your dude Light here and today we are going to be continuing with these crypto wallet reviews and the wallet in question is called Rainbow which is available as a browser extension. It's also available on mobile devices. However, this review will be solely based on the browser extension as I don't like reviewing things on mobile unless I'm being paid to. Now, the current version of the extension is available on Chrome, Brave, Edge, Firefox, Arc, and Safari. This review will be based on my experience with Chrome. I also have it installed on Oprah because Oprah has the capability of installing uh, Chrome extensions on it. However, I had a kind of bad experience with it because it's not able to connect to all the dApps that I'm using like Uniswap, for example, on Chrome. So I really recommend using any of the six here probably Chrome because that's probably where a lot of the testing is done even though Chrome kind of sucks but hey everybody's using Chrome so that's probably the best frame of reference to use here. So um, Rainbow is basically an EVM based you know wallet it's supporting a lot of different EVM chains like Ethereum, Binance Smart Chain, Zora etc which we are going to be exploring in this video don't you worry but first I want to kind of break down a bit of the features and functionalities of uh, Rainbow Wallet as a whole and there has been a lot of like just in general there's a lot of wallets that have emerged as of late people are doing a lot of alternatives for MetaMask and a lot of other chains are starting to have a lot of extension wallets and we're seeing a lot more increase in this uh, going on and a lot of these I think in next year we're going to be seeing a lot more of these wallet products actually doing their own tokens. I think Phantom is going to be releasing their own token, MetaMask is going to be releasing their own token and Rainbow is also going to be releasing their own token. So I think there's going to be a lot of wallets which are going to be doing that and you want to really keep paying attention to these wallets and what are they doing and what type of tasks they have going on to basically accrue those uh, airdrop things. And there are a lot of um, couple of cool features here, for example, uh, with uh, Rainbow is that you can actually use the keyboard to do functionalities on the wallet. So in case your, uh, I don't know, your mouse broke down or you just fell on the floor and too lazy to pick it up, you have the ability to basically use these shortcut keys to access the wallet and do a lot of fast things here. Now I have to say like in terms of a lot of wallets that I have reviewed on the channel, as you know, I've done many hardware wallet reviews and I have done a lot of extension reviews as well on the channel. But you have to understand that fundamentally we are seeing, you know, a lot of slowness in many of the extension wallets and desktop wallets. I'm very proud to say that Rainbow is probably one of the fastest wallets that I have used. Uh, in a while because a lot of them are very laggy and they load a lot and they just drain a lot of the uh, resources from your PC. They're just not well optimized. So that's one of the key strengths about Rainbow. It's a very smooth interface and things like that. So you can switch your wallet swaps and in case access your all your wallets inside it. And you can add hundreds of different wallets here. I mean, a couple of wallets have only like limitations how many you can add, but with Rainbow you can add uh, basically as many as you want to. And it says all the chains that matter in one place. Well, we're going to be uh, addressing that claim in a second. And you also have the ability to use a hardware wallets, which are being connected to our uh, rainbows or ledger and treasure. Obviously, we have users in my you know community which have bought things like Secux and Keystone. I don't know about their functionality and logging in with those. Maybe in the future, those are going to be added in. There's also functionality to showcase your NFTs technically. And then there is obviously a custom RPC feature which is going to be added in the future. So right right now, uh, just kind of like the Tally Ho wallet, they are not supporting custom EVM chains. And that sometimes is very important for airdrop farmers, for, expe for example, and a lot of other people who are like interacting with test nets. So for developers, it's not very ideal to have no support for those custom RPCs, but I am very sure that that is going to be launching very soon on the Rainbow Wallet. And impersonation mode, which allows you to basically do these read-only mode things for the wallet. So you can open up a wallet of another person, like you can spy on me, I guess, and you see what type of transactions I'm doing. Like you maybe are following a whale and what transactions they are doing. Are they dumping, selling, blah, blah, blah. You can view that. A lot of wallets don't have this feature, at least on extension sites. I really haven't seen that. So that's a very convenient thing. And then there's swapping thing. We're going to be talking about that later on. 
and they have a support team. I have not engaged in that support team, so I don't know what uh, quality is that. Because obviously if you spam anything on Twitter, you're going to get 100 messages basically of people claiming to be... Um, and there's some type of exclusive drops. I don't know anything about these. But if there's going to be any type of rainbow airdrop in the future, um, you might want to acquire some of them. But let's now open up the actual extensions. And here, by the way, is like all the types of... Um, I'm going to leave this here for the shortcuts. But let's let's open up in here. So this is the interface here. I think it's uh, by default black. I, there may not be an actual white mode here on extension, but maybe on mobile there is. And here we have our wallets. We are able to add another wallets here through seed phrases and private keys. Some wallets only allow seed phrases like fucking MetaMask. Your first wallet has to have a seed, which fucking sucks because maybe you want to just add the private key. And you can add a hardware wallet. You can also the watch wallet, which we talked about just a minute ago. And you can also create a new wallet based on one of your seed. And then there's obviously adding the hardware wallet and that is treasure and ledger uh, ability. So one of the things here, um, you're seeing the full balance here. You're seeing all the tokens that are listed here. Most the icons here are supported. So a lot of the other wallets like MetaMask, they don't have the icons here. And the icons are important because there's a lot of like impersonators, you know, in any, any, any ecosystem. Any EVM, you have people like, oh, this is an Ethereum. You can, anybody can make, name a token called Ethereum. And you but the contract address is what matters what's making difference here so it's fundamentally important to have these codes here and on the side of the the coin it has the chain so here we have ethereum on arbitrum ethereum on zora ethereum on base usdc on polygon binance by bnb on binance smart chain um and i have some space course i have no idea what that is but yes so we have uh, ability here to, you know, um, see everything here. It's very clear. Yes, you can see refreshing, scrolling very fast and easy. There's a buying functionality here. You can buy. These obviously have a lot of fees, guys. So if you're not really in a rush, don't usually use these Coinbase, Ramp, and MoonPay, kind of like standard stuff. Then there's a sending tool here. Um, you can send to an ENS address or normal address. Um, I can put like buy. My other address here, Lagerwoods.eth, and I can send it. Let's see, I'm trying tokens, and I also have the ability to change out the GUI. I have ability to add a custom GUI. This is a lot more cleaner layout than uh, Unis. Sorry, MetaMask is offering. So that's something I really, really, really like here is that I have a much more clear interface. What the hell is going on here? The miner tip, the current base fee, and max base fee, and etc. So sending out transactions on a custom fee, very easy with this wallet. There's also a swapping feature, and this swapping feature is likely going to be the contribution for the upcoming airdrop. So for example, I have DAI here, and DAI is basically backed up by different assets here. So it's kind of sucky because it's no longer using the... Um, it used to be backed and pegged in the F, which was better in my opinion. But uh, right now, I feel more, you know, home with USDC, so I can basically swap. There's going to be a $4 fee and apparently a very, very high fee. Let me actually see that if that's right, because I want to confirm that the GUI is actually that high to amount to that type of a cost of 51 GUI. So maybe actually we are going to be doing a transaction on another chain to demonstrate the swapping feature. So let's go back to swap and you can actually do things like zero point you can i can swap from optimism straight up to another chain um and let's say we want to be doing oh uh, let's try polygon or is it actually not allowing okay yes i can filter it by polygon and we're going to be doing ethereum here wrapped ethereum so let's do this you can choose normal review swap to eth and voila, it's basically basically starting out this process. And here on the home tab, uh, sorry, here on the, the clock tab, it's basically showing out the process. 
and I don't know how long this will be basically taking, but it has this inbuilt swapping features. It's very conven convenient because a lot of the other swap things like on MetaMask, for example, I believe it's only chain to chain. So from, from BSC to BSC. I, that's why I remember it. I haven't used it too much recently, so I'm, I might be wrong about that. And then there is also um, NFT tab. Now the NFTs are not viewable on this extension, but you can view them on the web which is uh, half a solution because we're not able to send them. So it might be important to send some type of an NFT here to uh, another place. We can view it and can see it like where it's listed and a lot of information about the um, thing about here, but we're not able to really interact. Now, apparently you can do it on the app, but we're not reviewing the app. So I don't care what the app is able to do, because I want to be able to access this stuff on my extension. Granted, there isn't really that many wallets on extension side which are supporting NFT transfers, so I can understand that. But that's still something that they need to get things running if they want to be the top wallet in the game. Then um, there is also um, the airdrop tab, and this is points. And I mean, look at it. It's a parachute, guys. It's a parachute. So I'm just saying, guys, like, yeah, you, you want to really interact with this this wallet to be eligible for something in the future. Then on the top, you can see like the connect things and connected apps. Right now we're not connected to anything. I'm gonna show you how it's done. So sometimes uh, these sites don't actually have rainbow listed here. So you need to just choose MetaMask. And here it says connect to Uniswap, voila, we're locked in. And some other things like let's say OpenSea, I'm pretty sure OpenSea has rainbow listed automatically. So let me see, login, view all. Okay, it's, it's not actually listed here. Well, um, so, so Rainbow has to get them listed on a lot of places if they want to stay relevant. But, but, but in, enough about that. Then let's go back into the settings. Um, here's the QR code. If you wanna send donations to me right now, this is your queue. Um, then there is a locking feature. You have a testnet mode, and this basically allows you to access different testnet networks, and that is Gorily. And I'm not really sure what are these other networks. No, these are all on Gorily. Gorily. I'm not so I'm sure I'm not supposed to, supposed to pronounce that. Anyhow, so you have some testnets available here. And then on the settings tab, you can choose whatever rainbow is used on default wallet. So in case you are going to be using one browser, I mean, most of you watching this video are using one browser. I have many browsers just because of this. I want to use many wallets for many different reasons. And when you have like Phantom, MetaMask, Rainbow, Tallyho, all installed in one browser, they are not all able to log into a one site because they use kind of like the same technology. So that's why I separate these wallets into different browsers. So this is a very convenient feature for that. In terms of the networks, we have currently Ethereum, Optimism, Binance, Smart Chain, Polygon, Base, Arbitrum, and Zora. We could argue that this is basically all the relevant ones right now, but it is missing Linea and ZK Zinc Era is not on the list. Those two need to be there. Linea is obviously kind of like the brainchild product of the MetaMask team, where MetaMask is very invested in that so that's kind of like their competition so i don't know if they're going to be adding that but obviously they are going to be supporting custom rpcs which allows you to add these chains here but i do like that everything has a fucking icon like metamask still doesn't have icons for all the prominent chains there which is just creating more uh, opportunities for scammers to do shitty things this is currently available on english chinese espanoles francais Portuguese, Ruski, Indonesia, Turkey, and whatever, Korean, and whatever that budget language is. And, oh yeah, here we have the dark. So we have the light theme and the system theme. The system looks kind of like the dark. Are they not the same? Okay, whatever. We're going to be going with the system. And then there's like a guides tab, which takes you to, well, places you need to go. And then there's a transactions tab, which allows you to do flash bots. These are kind of like, well, doing super fast. If you're aping into an NFT collection or something, you might want to use this. And then you can like adjust the speedness of that. 
And that's pretty much everything we need to cover here. So to kind of wrap things up, Rainbow is a really solid wallet. It's fast, it's lightweight, and by fast I mean it fucking opens up. Like MetaMask is like kind of slow, it's very slow to use. It's not loading fast on Windows at least, maybe on Mac it's different, whatever. And obviously AirDrop is on the way, we don't know what's going to be the criteria, I think it's going to be swaps, swap volume, and then there's probably going to be those NFTs. Um, these might be something to do with it. So there's probably going to be some type of quests in the future. But I mean, if you're looking for a MetaMask alternative, we have to remember that MetaMask is on, I think they are on New York. So there are a lot of like under jurisdictions and they have like IP bans on Iran and some other countries. So Rainbow is really good because I do believe that they are not based on America. So they're not like same... They're not like, I don't know actually where they're based, but I think they may not be in America. Now, I don't like the whole LGBT theme here. Maybe there should be a mode to add a black rainbow or something like that. That would be actually kind of cool. But that's pretty much what I have to say about everything uh, regarding rainbow. I really like it and I'm going to be start using it a lot more. But right now it does need that custom RPC support and that NFT tab support to um, fully replace MetaMask as a competitive, viable comp competition. But thanks for watching, guys. In case you want to support the channel, make sure to subscribe, like, and leave a comment down below what wallet extension we should review next on the channel. Thanks for watching. I will be seeing you next time.